For this project, you're going to want one kitchen dish towel. You want to make sure it's light to medium weight, um, otherwise it could be too thick to sew. For example, a bathroom hand towel is often too thick. You're also going to want some cotton fabric. For both of these, you're going to want to make sure that they've been washed and dried prior to starting your project. An apron is something that you're going to want to clean frequently, and these fabrics can shrink in the wash, and you want to make sure that happens before you make your apron rather than after. After you've pre-washed your fabric, you need about a third of a yard of your fabric. You can also use, if you would like to, a lightweight fusible interfacing. When you're preparing your cotton fabric, make sure that you trim off the selvage. The selvage is this factory finish that comes on the edge of your fabric so that it doesn't fray. It often has different texture or consistency than the rest of the fabric. Sometimes it can even have little punctures or holes. So make sure you trim that off before you begin. If you would like to, you can also add a little bit of decorative lace or trim to the pocket of your apron. You can refer to the free cut layout on my website to help cut out your pieces. We're going to begin by constructing the pocket. For the pocket, you need two 6 by 9 inch rectangles. Make sure that these rectangles are nice and pressed. If you would like to, you can also cut a piece of fusible interfacing the same size. And let's start by applying the interfacing to the back of one of the pocket pieces. You're going to want to apply it to the back of the piece that you want to be in the front of the pocket. So head to your ironing board and place the fabric right side down on top of the ironing board. The interfacing goes right on top of it, and you want to make sure that the rough side of the interfacing is touching the fabric. The rough side contains the glue. Mine's a little bit smaller, so I'm just going to center it. Press according to the instructions provided by the manufacturer. The next step is optional. If you would like to, you can add lace trim to the top of your pocket. To do this, you're going to place the trim right side down on top of your pocket. You're going to place it close to the seam allowance so that after you sew, when you flip it up, you'll see the lace edge. So this part where the lace is bound, where it has kind of like a finishing edge, that part we want to hide, that will be in the seam allowance. The lacy ruffle part is what we want to see when we're done. We're going to be sewing the pocket with a half an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to draw myself a guide on the top of my pocket. I'm using an air erase marker and I'm just going to draw a line a half an inch from the top edge. I know that this line is where my stitches are going to be. I'm also going to draw myself a mark a half an inch from each end because that will also be in the seam allowance. When I put my lace on the fabric, I want the bound edge to be above the line and the frilly part to be below the line. I also want to make sure that it stays within my side edge, so I'm going to place it about an eighth of an inch away from my little mark here. Now that this has been pinned in place, I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to baste it in place with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. A basting stitch is just a little bit longer than a normal stitch and it's just to hold things in place. Once it's been stitched, I like to flip it over and give it a little press to help make sure it lays flat. I pressed from the wrong side just in case my lace could melt. 
Lay your pocket piece right side up. Take your second pocket piece and place it right side down on top of the first. Align the top edges and sides and pin in place. I'm now ready to sew my pocket together. I'm going to sew all the way around, leaving an opening in the bottom to turn. So I'm going to start at one pin, sew all the way around, and stop at the other, leaving about a two to three inch hole on the bottom. I'm going to be stitching with a half an inch seam allowance. If you've adjusted your stitch length, make sure to return to stitch length 2.5. Clip the four corners, take care not to cut your stitches. Turn the pocket right side out. Press your pocket flat. Use a press cloth to protect the lace if you need to. And make sure you tuck in the fabric at the opening so that it looks like it's been sewn. Lay your hand towel right side up. Identify the top and bottom edge. I like to make sure that the tag is on the bottom. The first thing you want to do is find the center of the top and bottom edge. I like to do this by folding the towel in half. I'm going to lay my ruler on my hand towel and I'm going to connect the top and bottom centers. So right now my ruler's edge is right here and my ruler is centered in the middle of the hand towel. I want to center the pocket on my hand towel. Now you can place your pocket wherever you want on your hand towel. You can place it close to the bottom, you can place it close to the top, or right in the middle, whichever you prefer. I'm going to place my pocket so that it's four inches from the bottom edge. And I'm going to make sure it's centered. Now I'll move my ruler and pin it in place. Now that my pocket's been placed where I like it, I'm ready to stitch it in place. I'm going to sew down like a U around my pocket. I'm going to use about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Um, you can have your pocket be just one big pocket like this, or if you'd like to, you can divide it to make smaller pockets. Um, I like to make sure that my cell phone fits inside the pocket, but you can make it however big you want. I like to split my pocket exactly in half. So I'm going to draw a line four inches down the center. And you can do this before you pin if you prefer. But this center line is where I'm going to do a pocket division. So after I sew around the U of the pocket, I'm going to stitch on the center to create a division. When I stitch my center line, I like to start at the bottom, go up to the top, turn, and then come back to the bottom. This will help reinforce the stitches and make it quite strong. You can also use a triple stitch if you prefer. So let's head to the sewing machine and get our pocket in place. Um, since this is terry cloth and it is just a little bit thicker, I'm gonna increase my stitch length to 3.5 when I sew this on. My pocket's now in place. It's been divided into two equal sections, so I have two nice pockets here on my hand towel. Let's start working on our waistband. For the waistband, if you only need the waistband and ties to be a total of about 38 inches, then you can just use one long strip of fabric. If you need your waistband and ties to be longer than that, you may have to piece it together. So for example, my waist measurement is 30 inches. So if I had ties that were 38, I'd only have a few inches to tie it behind my waist and I want more than that. 
So I'm gonna be piecing my waistband together and I am using rectangles that are five inches wide. Anything from about four to six inches is great. The wider you do these rectangles, the wider your waistband and ties will be. So to cut my rectangles, again, you can look at the cut layout that's provided on my website, but I cut one strip of fabric that was five inches long and cut it in half. That gave me two rectangles that are approximately 20 and a half inches long, and I made sure to trim off the selvage. These two rectangles will be the sides. These will make the ties that tie behind my waist. This rectangle is just a little bit longer. It's about 23 inches long. So you can adjust this center piece however you like to create a waistband in the size that you'd like. So you can cut it as small as 14 or 16 inches um, or as big as the maximum your fabric allows. So whichever you prefer is just fine. Take the piece that's gonna be the center of the part with the towel attached, make sure it's nice and flat, and we're gonna fuse some interfacing to the back of this rectangle. I want the fabric at the center of my apron to have a good amount of structure so it doesn't roll, but I don't want that where I'm gonna be tying a knot in the back. I'd prefer my fabric to be a little bit lighter weight. So I'm just gonna put interfacing on the center rectangle, but you can do all three if you prefer. Lay your center rectangle right side up. Take one of your side rectangles and lay it right side down on top of it, aligning one of the edges and pin in place. Move that rectangle out of the way and do the same on the other side with your other rectangle. Stitch the rectangles together on the two sides using a half an inch seam allowance. Press both seams open. My three rectangles are connected, and the next step is the same whether you're using the connected pieces or one solid piece for your waistband. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw myself a pressing guide. Along the bottom edge and along the top edge, through the whole length of the waistband, I'm gonna draw myself a one inch guideline, which will help me to create a half inch fold later. So I'm drawing a line one inch away from the edge along the bottom and the top. And I'm gonna continue these lines all the way down. Next, I'm gonna fold my fabric up to touch my line. And I'm gonna press all the way down. Once the waistband's been pressed, we're ready to finish the ends. So on the end of the waistband, gently open up the folds you just made and turn the fabric right side together. And pin if needed. And we're gonna stitch along this short edge with a half an inch seam allowance. So just right here along this edge with a half an inch seam allowance. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other end. The two ends are now stitched, and so I'm ready to turn. I'm going to clip the corner on just the folded edge, um, and I'm gonna take care not to get too close to my stitches. I'm gonna stay a good eighth of an inch away. Same on the other fold. And then I'm gonna take my seam allowance, and I'm going to fold it open. And then I'm gonna turn down the edge at the line I pressed before. And then I'm gonna poke out the corner. If you need to, you can use a turning tool to help get that corner nice and sharp. But I now have a nice finished edge for my ties. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Next, when you're looking at your waistband, you want to find the center. So I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna line up my two seams here. And I'm gonna find the center. 
and I'm going to mark it with a pin. And next we're going to get our hand towel ready to fit inside our waistband. So here's the lace on my pocket. So this is the top edge of my towel. And I'm going to mark the center of the towel again. So I need the top edge of this hand towel to fit in the section I'd like it to on my waistband. Each hand towel is a little bit different in length and width, so there's not one set of measurements to use for this process. It's kind of a guess and check um, method, but here's how I do it. I like the hand towel to take up about 16 inches of space on my waistband. So from my center, I'm going to mark 8 inches to the left and 8 inches to the right to help give me a guide of where to place my hand towel. From there, I'm going to make pleats in the top of my hand towel to fit my towel within this section. I like the center front to be flat. So I'm going to mark four inches from each side of the center. And I know I don't want any pleats in this section. Keeping about the center six to eight inches usually works pretty well. From there, you can kind of play with the size of your hand towel to figure out where you want your pleats. What you want to be careful of is you want to make sure that whatever you do on the left, you do on the right, because you want it to be equally balanced. It's also a good idea to try and keep your pleats about the same size, avoid any overlapping of the pleats, and try to keep it out of the end seam allowance if you can. I like to try first making guide marks, so let me show you what I mean. This is the pin marking the center of my towel. And this is the pin that's four inches away from that. To the right hand side of that pin, I'm gonna do markers that are one and three fourths inches apart. You can try two inches apart, you can try one and a half inches apart, and whichever works for you. So I found that for me on this size of towel, one and three fourths works pretty good. So from this pin, I'm gonna put a pin every one and three fourths inches. So this is the flat section in the front of my apron. And I'm gonna go to my next pin, and I'm gonna grab this pin, align it with the first, and tuck it to the back. And I'm gonna put a clip to hold it in place. Then I'm gonna skip the section that's right next to the pleat I just did, I'm going to go to the next two pins. I'm going to pinch them together and fold it to the back. So notice that my pleats are going the same direction. The folds are both pointing towards the center. And I'm going to clip it in place. And then again, skip the section that's right next to my pleat. Go to the next two pins align them together, and fold it to the back. And clip in place. Now I can remove my pins. I'm keeping my center mark there. I'm gonna lay my pleats nice and flat, and now I'm gonna check the size. Here's my center waistband, and here was my guide for where I want the towel to end. So I'm going to take the center of the towel and align it with the center of my waistband and see how it goes with my mark. It's about an eighth of an inch inside my mark, which is really close to my goal, and so I think that worked out just perfect. If you find that your towel is either way smaller or way bigger than where you wanted it to be placed, then go ahead and adjust your pleats accordingly. So let's do the same thing on the other side. Now you don't have to be this precise with your pleats. You can just fold them to what looks nice for you, but I do like to be kind of meticulous Now that all the pleats are in place, I'm going to double check the size. 
Yep, and it fits within my window. So I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna baste this in place with about a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna increase my stitch length to about four or five. I'm gonna use a few pins to hold my pleats in place so I don't have to worry about it later when I'm sewing. Make sure that the top where the pleats are is nice and flat. And let's attach the waistband. This is how I want the waistband to be placed when I am finished. Here is the top center of my apron and here's the bottom center on my waistband. I'm gonna take the waistband and I'm gonna flip it down on top of the towel. And I'm going to gently open up this fold and I'm going to align the centers. And I'm going to pin this in place. So next I'm going to stitch in the ditch. Basically what this means is I'm going to stitch exactly in this crease where my fold was. So I'm gonna stitch pretty slow and keep as exact to that as I can. This is really thick. I'm going through several layers of towel as well as the cotton. So I'm gonna increase my stitch length to four. Um, just take care, go slow, protect your fingers when you're sewing. So use a guide if you need to. Now that the towel is attached to the waistband, we're gonna flip the waistband up and over towards the back. I'm gonna keep this fold in place and I'm gonna flip this up and over. And I want the fold to line up with the row of stitches that I just made. When I pin this in place, I'm not gonna poke it down through all the fabric and up through all the fabric because it's super thick and it would distort the shape. So I'm only going to insert the pin through the cotton on top and through a little bit of the terry cloth so that it still lays the way it's supposed to. It is important that you put your pins perpendicular to the edge um, because we will be sewing from the other side of our fabric and we want to make sure that we can remove the pins as we go. Once you've pinned the section, attach the waistband, aligning it with your row of stitches. Continue pinning the rest of the waistband. When you do this section, align the seams if you pieced your waistband together and fold it in half so that the edges touch. So that's all pinned in place and it looks nice and flat. So now I'm going to stitch along the bottom edge of the waistband all the way across from side to side. I'm gonna stitch it in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. When I'm stitching the section on the waistband that's just the cotton fabric, I'm gonna use a stitch length of 3.5. When I'm stitching on the section that includes the towel, I'm gonna to use a stitch length of four. So when I get to the point right before and right after the towel, I'm gonna to stop to adjust my stitch length. Once it's been sewn, double check to make sure the whole waistband's been caught in your stitches. Then go to your ironing board and press. 
As you press, take care to not put the iron on the terry cloth. Um, some towels don't press well at all and can melt. So keep your iron away from your terry cloth if you can, um, or use a press cloth and turn down your heat. 